catch up. Okay, so we're supposed to do this on the roof, but guys, this is too hot. So for the sake of my guest, who is on the what? the stairs, who just happens to be there. Hello, <laughs> Jasmine always hangs out at staircases looking <laughs> awesome, right? Oh, uh, it's just, I'm just hanging out. <laughs> uh, so we'll do it on the stairs instead. It, okay. it, it seems better. It's we'll okay. just figure out as go along. Yes. Uh, for those who don't know, Jasmine, she is uh, many instructors in one. We teach bar, Hi. yoga, Hi. pilates. Hi. And of course, she's the owner of the studio as well. Mm. Uh, and a mom. Mm. How do you do it all? Um, having help and letting go. I think that's Actually, the, yeah, the letting go part is... Letting go, yes. I didn't used to allow my helper to do anything. Then I just died. <laughs> <laughs> and then through that resurrection, I decided I have to let go of some things. Okay, good. So that is number one tip. Uh, the other thing is, I guess I want to ask, like, I saw you recently posted something about how to be an instructor and that you don't need to be good at something before you can be an instructor. I, I think, yeah. okay, there has to be some kind of base. Yes. I think if you have, you know, gone for some classes and you have that interest, I yes. think what's more important is having that passion and the interest because that's what that's what's going to get you better. Okay. So I always look for attitude mm -hmm. um, over Ability. even if you're... Even if you can like triple flip a handstand, for example, <laughs> but if you're really hardworking, I actually think the more hardworking person has more more way of you know progressing in a way. You know what I mean? Yes. Like if you have the the interest, you would find out how to do it, and you will eventually get there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there are a few jumps that you made. Uh, mm, first jump, yes. I guess, from do you have a full like a corporate I job? I was previously? in banking. Okay, mm. so the first jump from banking to becoming a full-time instructor. Yes. Tell me about that jump. I think a lot of people want to make that jump. Wow. But <laughs> <laughs> I was in, when I was in school, I was doing finance. Yes. So in SMU, there was only one track. Right? Yes. Yeah. yes. Everyone wants to be a banker. If you are in banking, if you study finance, you go into banking, you go into sales and trading in our era was like, yes, know, yes, yes. And then all investment banking or like private banking. Yes. So then I spent my whole life in school trying to get these internships. And then in year three, in year four, it was just all about getting into the biggest bank. So while I, you know, was busy doing that, I didn't ask myself questions like, do you actually like this? You know, you oh. just go along with the flow. Yes. Straight out of school, I got I got hired by one of the, like the private banks. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, oh my God, you know, they celebrated You've that. You've made it. You've made it. And then you, when you are in that, you don't think about anything else. You don't yeah. think about, oh, is this really what I truly like? Yeah. You're just like, oh, this is so awesome because I'm awesome, you know? So I did like three years, but every single day I can clearly remember, like, I, I'm not myself. And when I'm in there, I cannot be myself. Yes. Because if if I become myself, I feel like I will not succeed, mm. you know, to climb that corporate ladder. So I really felt like a failure inside to the point of like going home and being very depressed because I felt just so not authentic. Yeah. So at the end of like at the end of my career I think there was it was more push factor la, than pull factor okay. I was just so sick and tired of constantly being sick and tired that I just had to like throw a letter I threw a letter and then my boss asked me then what are you going to do now? I had no answer you didn't have a plan I, applied, I, applied, I sent my resumes out to other banks and there was no reply. Like, so you really was push factor then, yeah. It very. Was... So I just thought, okay, maybe I'll take a break. So during the break, I started working for Lululemon, which is like an apparel, yeah. like athleisure. And then through that, they got me like a yoga gig because I was already a yoga instructor. I took my slip when I was like 19, right? Ah. I never taught. So then I started teaching a bit and then I realized, wow, this is making me so happy. Like my life completely took on a whole new meaning and I was so much more fulfilled. Then I just toyed with the idea of like, you know what, maybe for two years, let me just try doing this like full time. Yeah. So in those two years, I realized that my, like my passion, like my whole life, I felt like I was just meant to do this. So then the studio happened and then that's how, you know, it became a business. So, but in the interim, right, your income would take a hit from mm. like a full time banking yes. income to an uh, instructor income, mm -hmm. right? So how does one get over that hurdle? Mm. Um, ask that question a lot actually but I always say you would just have to consider your options weigh out everything so I would sit down write down all my obligations and really think about bare minimum how much I need to survive uh, okay. I'm not talking about like buying your branded things okay like just literally enough to live. 
enough to live and know that you are sacrificing something because you're fulfilling something else. Okay. So okay. Yeah, you have cut, to get over that. Correct. Cut you cannot expect to like jump into another industry yeah. and like, wow, same, same pay, same yeah. life. No, but your life will be fulfilled in other ways. Mm, yeah. That is... And then there was the next jump. Okay, so you did the full-time instructor thing. Mm. And then the next jump was to set up your own yes. studio. Yes. Which is another... Big it was hurdle. a little scary. It was a little scary. But thankfully then I was already on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So people already knew me as a yoga instructor. Yes. And because I had quite a good amount of following, yeah. uh, the news of me opening a studio just like instantly everyone knew. That, that and helps. free yeah. marketing, right? Yeah, that helps. <laughs> Actually, then yes. I have to ask, like, mm. uh, how did you even... And why did you even start Instagram? Was it because I started when I was in banking. I oh, started okay, okay. because at that time when Instagram first launched, there was a lot of yoga challenges going around. Oh, so you just like the yoga? So I just did the yoga challenges and posted it on my own page. And people, my friends were like, dude, we don't want to see your buttock. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> you always can come with friends to say this kind of things. So my friends are the best like that also. So I had to open a new yoga page just to post all these photos. Oh, and it gained traction. I see. So it was really yes. like that. It was really just like that. Right now, actually, it's really such a weird time on Instagram, thinking like, what is Instagram really wanting and what do I want to post, yeah. right? Like, if Instagram wants reels that are all trending, then it might not be what I want to post. But mm. I have to post it because, you know, there's the engagement thing that we have to think about. Yeah. So I think right now I'm in a space where I would post one or two things to get the engagement up. And then yeah. the rest of it is my authentic self, where okay. I'm showing a little bit of my life, a bit your of baby. everything in my life. Yeah. I used to see your baby's quite big for her. He is! Her He's was like, pretty small. This yeah. big! <laughs> and like, I gave up, like, how did this thing come on? Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. So, so, you, okay, so you actually had quite mm. a, I would say, smooth each journey to becoming an instructor. It was quite organic. Maybe yes. not smooth, but organic. Yes, okay. It just kind of flowed. It really just kind of yeah. flowed. One thing after the other. Mm. And do you bother to plan what's next or do you just... <sighs> I hate to answer this. I know, I'm <laughs> asking her just deliberately because we both hate to answer this question. But sometimes in yeah. this context, it felt like it needed to be asked. Yeah, I, It's really interesting how I can say, no, I didn't plan it to happen, but at yeah. the same time, everything seemed so planned. Yes. You know, it's yeah. such a... It's such an interesting idea. So now looking forward into the future, I can only say I'm keeping my mind really open as yeah. to the possibilities. I give myself a rough, like, I would say, sketch of how I think it will happen. Okay. But I'm not limiting it to my sketch of how it's going to happen. Because I know anything, literally anything yeah. is possible. Yeah. Okay, top tip to anyone who wants to be an instructor. Just do it. <laughs> Actually, really? it would be, let's not, if you have that calling, that inkling, yeah. don't ignore it. Because once you have it, you know it's something you want to fulfill. And like one of my teachers actually told me, if you have that calling, if you have the inkling, you already know the answer. You're just mm. seeking for someone to confirm it. So and don't seek, just just go for it. Try, take yeah. a class, go. Well, listen to your, listen to the little voice inside and give it the the respect that it deserves. You know, your, your little voice inside. Yes. Alright guys, hear it from Jasmine. Thank yes. you guys, catch you soon. Thank you. Bye.